Almost split in the state of Maryland in half, the Chesapeake Bay contains over 18 trillion gallons of water and is around 200 miles long. Along with its various tributaries, the bay supports 17 million people, with its yields and opportunities sheltering around 10 million within a watershed that covers portions of six states as well as the District of Columbia. Also encapsulated with its brackish confines are a multitude of isles, several of which have been inhabited even before the British colonies of the 17th century. While slightly isolated, these islands have developed a unique and prominent culture. Still widely recognizable today, Smith Island Cates, with their distinctive layers, catch the attention of people all across America, and also stand as Maryland's state dessert. Various seafood dishes such as crab cakes and oysters have become primary symbols of the eastern shore due to the island's contributions to the seafood industry. Despite the various difficulties of life on the island, several communities have persisted to keep their culture alive. However, the forces of Mother Nature have already begun their relentless encroachment upon the homes of people that have made their livelihood on the island for generations. Sea level rise, as a likely result of climate change, has been increasingly steady over time, with the state of Maryland alone losing 260 acres of its shore annually. Not only has the shoreline been lost due to the rise in sea levels, but some estimates say that in the recent centuries over 500 islands have also succumbed to the waves of the bay. A warning of these common dangers can be found in Highlands Island, consisting of 225 acres in 1753 and only around 60 acres remaining in 2014. Almost three quarters of a once bustling community has disappeared below the relentless waters of the bay. At its height, the population numbered around 360, but not a living soul is left today. The lonely island hides a dynamic and colorful past similar to its fellow islands of the Chesapeake, which the first islanders endured turbulent times. They were often at the mercy of war, occupied and menaced by the British Navy and ill-disciplined American privateers alike during the American Revolution, as well as the War of 1812. The Chesapeake Bay was blocked during both conflicts and once more during the American Civil War, during which the island was thrust into a central position between the North and South. A fleet of federal ships, the Potomac Flotilla, patrolled the southern bay as part of the complete blockade of the rebellious states known as the Anaconda Plan. Only after these destructive and dangerous wars did the culture and industry blossom into a sort of golden age for the islands of the bay. The population of most islands experienced incredible growth extending up to 600 on Highlands Island. By the 1900s, most of the islanders lived on the harvest of the sea rather than the farmlands they initially relied on. An incredibly diverse fleet of locally owned vessels sailed upon the bay, hunting for the rich beds of oysters below. Crabbing and fishing were also large industries of the island, but the most well-known was the gritty oystermen. Unfortunately, the journey of Holland's island was to come to an end. After a series of especially savage storms, the island was mostly abandoned by 1918 with the non-stop tides continuing to reduce it from a former glory. By the change of the millennium, a single house stood on Holland Island. Previously belonging to the Parts family, in the late 1800s, the lone house was once filled with children and surrounded by a thriving community collapsed in 2010 despite the efforts of Reverend Stephen L. White, who had tried for years to save the last vestige of the lost island. One of the most isolated communities in America known for its soft shell crabs is Tangier Island of Virginia. This island will soon join Highland Island in its watery grave. Only five feet above sea level, its 470 residents are carved out a precarious existence completely at the mercy of the rising sea levels. Losing an average of approximately 8 acres per year since 1850, the island has lost about two-thirds of its land thus far. Studies show the island may be uninhabitable in the next 50 years as water permeates from the surface and weathers the edges following the slightest storm. Although citizens of Tangier Island mainly do not believe in climate change, the island is diminishing fast. Even a small storm can cause a flood. Not only is the island chipping away steadily, but large pieces are ripped away during the heavier storms. 
Just 100 yards from the shore, the island is a marshland, with a slight high tide causing the sea to lap at the front and backyards of the island's residents. Located in the middle of the bay, Tangier has little to protect it from the incessant waters lapping at its shores. Tangier Island is not like most other islands, in that the citizens already know their island is thrown away, but they have accepted it. The citizens are sitting ducks just waiting for it to get worse because they are still attached to their homeland. Yet, they seem to have a sort of blissful feeling about all of it, because they know there is nothing they can do to stop it. So why not just enjoy the ride? Smith Island, despite having a slightly longer projected lifespan, is also facing its untimely end due to rising sea levels. Founded by John Smith and named after Captain Henry Smith, a colonial planter who once owned a large part of the island, its history is influential to the region surrounding it. Smith Island's vibrant community of fishermen and once farmers has shaped the culture of the Chesapeake, in 1849, Smith Island was made up of 9,776 acres, which has dropped to 9,499 acres in 1999. This loss of 277 acres, while seemingly insignificant, has turned farmlands into marshes, taking a toll on the island's population. From about 25 families in the late 1700s, it increased to 300 individuals at the time of the Civil War and about 800 in the early 1900s. A drastic decline led to only 375 residents at the turn of the 21st century. It is estimated that Smith Island could sink in at least 100 years with the bay's waters rising at a rate of one-fifth of an inch per year. Actions have been taken in attempt to address this problem. In 1994, the Army Corps of Engineers put several pieces of dredge soil around Rhodes Point as it was eroded at a rate of 8 feet per year. Several other government projects have been proposed or planned for islands, such as barriers, but have remained in the talks, often slowed by bureaucratic processes. These attempts, despite being helpful to a degree, did not and cannot save the island. Its vibrant culture and way of life could be lost forever under the waters of the bay. Just on the other side of the Chesapeake Bay is another area being affected by climate change. Cedar Island is another one of the many islands that have also succumbed to Mother Nature. Formerly a haven for summer getaways, the island now consists mainly of sand dunes. Cabins built by citizens were either brought to the mainland, earned, or sank over time. One of them, Timothy Kilman also owned the southern part of Cedar Island. He currently pays $15 a year to keep the island despite their being. Since we've lost so much and lost everything, they were still charging us for something that wasn't there. And uh, we finally got them out there and looked and said, oh yeah, okay, well that's gone. So I, we, we can't charge you for that. You know. Working hard to carve out a living on the bay, the islanders managed to prosper gaining cultural and economic significance in a bygone era of a rugged waterman that echoes to the modern day. Attracting many tourists with the fascinating charm of the enduring islands. Yet their tragic oncoming end is not only a shame, but also an anxiety-inducing reminder for the planet as a whole, which may soon meet the same fate. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, almost 40% of the population of America will definitely be in danger, as well as relatively densely populated coast around the globe. Caused by the absorption of heat from human activities into the seas and the melting of polar ice caps, the rising sea levels pose a serious threat to human civilization and it needed to be addressed. There is still hope for these proud islands but with mountain challenges posed by debates on possible solutions and the underlying causes of this disaster. Well, our island is disappearing, but it's because of erosion and not sea level rise. And then, unless we get a seawall, we, we will lose our island. But back to the question, why, why am I not seeing signs of the sea level rise? Such hopes are still, will continue to be, adrift for the foreseeable future.